do the two, two step? Okay. Good morning, church. Welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church on site and online. On this 20th, 21st Sunday after Pentecost, I am Nancy Suplicki, the Congregational President of RLC. We are honored that you are worshiping with us from wherever you are, here in our sanctuary, in your home, in another state, or even another country. We have a special message for those who are joining us online. During this worship service, we celebrate synchronous communion. This is a time to share communion with the Resurrection Church community of faith as you worship in your home or wherever you may be. To participate more fully in our online worship service, you may wish to gather a few things as we begin, including candles and matches, bread and crackers, wine and juice. The bulletin can be downloaded from our Facebook page. <coughs> Whether you are joining us online or here on site, you can use the Facebook chat to share your prayer requests. Before the end of the sermon, and we'll add them to the prayers of intercession. For those in the sanctuary, we also invite you to use your handheld devices, check in, share the peace, and chat with those online. Be sure to say, share this service on your Facebook page, as well as like us and follow us to be notified of special events and worship opportunities. Resurrection is a faith community reflecting the love of Christ through reaching out to each other, loving God through our worship and praise, and caring for all God's children and creation. Resurrection Lutheran Church is located on the original and ancestral homelands of the Manahoic people and we give thanks for their presence here since time immemorial. We wish to recognize and honor all our indigenous siblings who have and continue to call this land their home. Adult Forum continues today following the worship service to learn how Lutherans interpret the Bible with Dr. Mark Allen Powell Wednesday Women's Bible Study meets at 9.30 on site and online. They're studying the Book of Romans. Call the RLC office and they will send you the Zoom link. Friday Bags for Kiddos is an ongoing program for feeding now 66 children. It says 68, but there's only 66 in six Spotsylvania schools. Right now we have a crucial need for juice boxes as well as the other items that have been printed in the weekly bulletin. <coughs> Bring your donations to the RLC campus or have them shipped directly from your favorite retailer. As most of you know, we pack 300 bags for this purpose, September 8th. Those bags have been utilized, so we are now in need of all donations, please, for this week. Lutheran Disaster Response is working to support those affected by Hurricanes Helene and Milton and any other storms that may strike this season. Let's hope there aren't any more. Information is included in the RLC Weekly. Update for donations. Mark your calendars. We are calling an a council congregational meeting on Sunday, November 3rd, following worship, to discuss the ongoing financial status of our church. 
this coming Sunday, October 9th, Saturday, October 19th, the cabaret with the Spotsylvanians Community Chorus will be held here at 5 o'clock. Seating is limited. Your $10 tickets include refreshments, appetizers, and a dessert. Tickets can be purchased online at tickerorcom or at the door at a first-come, first-served basis. All details are in the RLC weekly update. Each year we honor those who re have those who have entered into the church triumphant on All Saints Sunday. This year, it's November 3rd. Please submit names of your family, friends, and loved ones by October 28th using the link in the RLC weekly update or by contacting the office. Mark your calendars and start planning your trunks and costumes for our annual trunk or treat that will be held on October 27th from 4 to 6. If it's raining, we will move inside to Fellowship Hall. Come and enjoy lots of treats, including hot dogs, chips, and a drink, and maybe a few tricks, too. <coughs> Information about all activities is included in the RLC Weekly Update, posted on our website, resurrectionpeople.org, and on our Facebook page. Leading us in worship today are Carol Bailey as lector, Patty Dunn as our music director, Pastor Tom Bailey will be presiding, and Allie Beck preaching. Our video production team is Robert Schul on camera, A.J. Beck on sound, and also running visuals. Pastor Tom and Pastor and Allie, sorry, Allie Beck are filling in for Pastor Heidi Moore, who is enjoying a few days vacation. Please stand as you feel called or able as Pastor Tom leads us in worship. We gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The call to worship, we are all welcome. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our faith and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes, but in our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last in your great mercy. Forgive our sin. God, near to us, grace, 
time of need, and turn to us, Father, in the name of Christ. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, our sins are forgiven. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share that peace with one another. Let us continue our worship with the gathering hymn, Gather Us In. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase us in your gift of faith 
They're taking what lies ahead and reaching out to what lies ahead. We may follow the way of your commands and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the fifth chapter of Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor, and take from them levies of grain. You have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time for it is an evil time. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of Hebrews. Hebrews. <clears throat> Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? 
No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud and honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then, come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I thank you in advance for your patience. This is the bout of bronchitis that will not go away, and my voice is still not returned after a month. So, thank you. Today is October 13th, which means we're halfway to November, and November means the start of basketball season. Amen. And for me, basketball season is the most wonderful time of the year. Pros, college, high school, it doesn't matter. Honestly, I'm insufferable. I'm convinced that the only reason people watch basketball with me is for the free entertainment. The sheer joy of seeing me throw my hands up, chew out the referees from the living room, pace the floor, and strike the coach's pose during close games. I can't help it. I love the game. I love the game that so I love the game so much that for years I traveled with the Eastern View High School girls basketball team and kept their scorebook. Whether it was home, away, a preseason tournament in Hanover, or the state playoffs in Norfolk, you could always find me, my book, and my pencil at the scorer's table. I remember one particular game about five years ago. We were home against Caroline, warm-ups had finished, and the teams and referees took their customary places as our announcer asked everyone to stand for the national anthem. The music rang out across the gym, until it didn't. The gallantly streaming stripes and stars were brought to a screeching halt. The silence was deafening, save for the sound of my pounding heart. My face began to flush, and droplets of sweat began to cover my forehead. You see, I have great difficulty dealing with awkward silences. I'm sure it was just a few seconds, but it certainly didn't feel that way. I couldn't take the discomfort any longer. Before I knew it, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, escaped from my lips and echoed across the gym as the crowd of parents, friends, and fans joined in. 
Oh, the feeling of sweet relief. All was right with the world. Looking back, it's not the awkward silence that bothers me. That's just a smokescreen. I don't like the unknown. I'm uncomfortable with both and. I struggle with ambiguity and will often go to great lengths to come to a resolution in any given situation. Which is why when I discovered that this was the gospel I would be preaching on, to say I had some holy heartburn would be a great understatement. But not for the reason you may think. Pastor Heidi often says, I don't pick them, I just preach them. While that's true for the scripture passage, I also think that's true for the sermon that is preached. Reverend Caroline Lewis in A Lay Preacher's Guide, How to Craft a Faithful Sermon, says that the call to preach is a holy task, one that we should answer with the encouragement of our cloud of witnesses, past and present, and the persistence of the Holy Spirit. And there was no lack of persistence on the part of the Holy Spirit this week. Because if not for the presence of the Holy Spirit in and among the preaching discipline this week, I would have been perfectly content giving a sermon just managing the message. I considered focusing on how the rich man couldn't have really kept the law in the same way that we don't always really keep the law. So Jesus telling him to give up his possessions was probably just a way of calling his bluff. But Jesus never refuted the claim that the man made about keeping the law. So that wouldn't really preach. And then I considered the command to sell what I own and give the money to the poor. Speaking for myself, I certainly fall short of that. But later on, Jesus gives us the ultimate divine out. For mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. Whew, dodged a bullet there. But that completely sidesteps God's grace and how we respond to that gift so that won't really preach either. I have to believe that I'm not alone and struggling to find some level of comfort in this text. When it comes down to it, we all know that the young rich man isn't the only one being confronted by Jesus here. We are not meant to be comforted by this text. We are also meant to be confronted. The SALT Project blog contributor for this week mentions that some biblical narratives are instructional, others are informational, and still others we're meant to wrestle with. And perhaps that's where we, and I include myself in, the, in that we, find ourselves today, right in the middle of the wrestling ring, grappling with the unknown, the both and, and the ambiguity. The fact of the matter is that this rich man was attentive, devout, and open-hearted. He wanted to learn more from Jesus. In fact, he's the only person in the Gospel of Mark that is singled out as being loved by Jesus. But he still walked away. This dearly loved person who did everything right according to society's rules, who followed the commandments, walked away. He found, at that point in time, that he valued his things more than he valued eternal life. This man couldn't escape the human condition. And the uncomfortable part, if we're honest with ourselves, is that neither can we. But that can't be all there is to this gospel, can it? How do we read this without saying, Jesus didn't really mean that we should sell everything? As much as it pains me to say, maybe we don't read it that way. We sit in the discomfort, the obscurity, and the uncertainty. In the end, we don't know what happened to the man. Maybe he clung more closely to his money. 
Maybe he just gave up trying to follow the law. Maybe he drew closer to Jesus, or maybe he went out and told what Jesus had said and done. We simply don't know. Sarah Henlicky Wilson reminds us, regarding this uncertainty, that the ending is Mark's invitation to us to confess despite fear, just as the women who fled from Jesus' empty tomb ultimately did. In the same way, the unresolved ending of the rich young man may invite us all to obedience yet unknown. The SALT Project echoes this sentiment. The upshot of this scripture isn't to settle the issue of how faith relates to money, but rather to provide us with a framework within which we can wrestle it out again and again over the course of our lives. And therein lies the gospel, the good news. Each and every time we enter the ring, we never do it alone. Good God, sweet Jesus, meet us there. Please rise as you are able for the hymn of the day. Let us go confess our faith as recorded in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, Lord, who was
challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Compassionate God, embolden the church to seek all who are lost, clothe those who are naked, and mend what is broken. May we be generous bearers of your eternal love. God of grace, sustaining God, we are approaching harvest time and we pray for farmers, field workers, and those who process the crops. Keep us mindful of environmental threats to the nourishing of food that feeds the world. God of grace, Steadfast God, inspire world leaders to share resources and work collectively to end global poverty, starvation, and preventable disease. Direct us to seek justice and equity that all may live in peace. O oh God of grace, loving God, we pray for those who are afflicted tormented, grieving, oppressed, and lonely. Especially do we pray to stay for Pat Roberts, for Terry Cook, for Mary Kay Schaefer, for Bob and family, Susan Heron, the Pupik family, Matt and Eileen Plasson, Rusty Abernathy, Rob Sugarden, Wayne Lauterbach, Ashley Hawkins, LaRue Tanner, Suzanne Heron, Sherry Monahan, all the hurricane victims of Helene and Milton, Susan Bingler, Alex and Adam Brandt. Generous God, we pray that you would be all with those whom we named and those whom we name in our hearts before you. O oh God of grace, generous God, we give thanks for the first nations and tribes who inhabited the land Manahan, we lament the harm done by colonization. Call us to a deeper appreciation and care for the language and rituals and history of all the indigenous people. God of grace, merciful God, hear our cry for mercy in the wake of the destructive hurricanes and storms. Reveal your presence in the midst of our suffering He'll help us to trust in your promises of hope and life and that the desperation and grief will not overtake us. Come quickly to our aid that we may know peace and joy again. Strengthen us in this time of trial with the assurance and hope we know in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, O God of grace. Ever-living God, we rejoice to be heirs of the eternal life made real in Jesus' death and resurrection. We give thanks for the saints of all times and places, first and last, who still inspire us to the faithful living of God. God of grace, into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your saving grace, you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. I'll ask uh, Nancy to give this, which is the moment, yeah, <laughs> the moment of, of giving. Please be seated. I want to thank each and every one of you for your continued support of the ministry of Resurrection Lutheran Church. 
Your gifts help us to be light of Christ, bringing Jesus to the streets as we reach love and care for all of God's people here in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and beyond. <clears throat> Every week, we get to prepare and deliver. Now it's 66 bags. One of the counselors sent me an email and requested that for five more bags. So our total is 66 bags of food to children in six schools in Spotsylvania County for our Friday bags for kiddos. This past week, our number grew to 66. You all have been so generous with your gifts of food and supplies. There are several ways that you can support this vital ministry through donations of food, funds, and your time. You are invited to donate directly with food and supplies sent directly to the RLC campus or have them shipped from your favorite retailer. Monetary donations can be given through our online giving QR code, which is in the bulletin, or in our offering plate. Being sure to note that it is Friday bags for kiddos. Thank you again for your generous gifts of money, prayer, and time. Together we can reach, love, and care for our community. Let us rise for the offertory prayer.
Blessed are you, O God, O source of every good gift from your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty, merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who in this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church, choirs of angels, and with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, let us praise your name and join their unending hymn. Almighty and merciful God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we drink of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Join us as we join in our Lord's Prayer, taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Let us sustain our daily bread and forgive us our trust. And we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not in temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God. You may be seated. Lamb of God.
Christ shed for you. I am the body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you at home and those in the pew, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we invite you to participate in RL Secret Tradition by holding hands and coming for the celebration hymn as you feel comfortable. Words are on the screen. Receive the blessing, Almighty God, God most merciful. Bless us and keep us and give us peace. Amen. Amen. Sending him, shout to the Lord. <laughs> 